So today, I um, just wanted to offer a little bit of um, guidance around, um, you know, we've, if you've listened to the uh, recorded instructions on the, on the website that offer like a six sense door uh, meta practice, right? A way of, of trying to cultivate the sort of caring energy. And really it's a meta karuna mudita practice, right? Of integrating the sense experience into our um, finding our way to this tenderness of heart, to loving kindness, to compassion, to appreciative joy. And and in this way, you know, finding a way to practice those things that we don't need to necessarily find some external or conceptual um, anchor for the love and kindness, right? That we can actually find a way to cultivate it, to, to, to encounter it, to nurture it, and to feel the goodness of it um, just within our non-conceptual direct experience. And it's something we've also, you know, uh, touched upon in talks and instructions here and there. And so today I just wanted to offer a little bit of guidance <clears throat> around the, the tool technique, the way that we can um, do a very similar thing with the quality of equanimity, right? With the fourth Brahma Vihara. Um, and so it's um, just a little bit different than our kind of normal Vipassana instruction in the morning, but it seemed like an important tool um, we wanted to be able to offer during um, this retreat. So you have that in your, um, range of tools if you don't already. So again, you know, finding your way back into a comfortable seated posture. And as we begin to come into relationship with this unfolding of our sense experience, mind and body, just as we've been doing. Just being sensitive to the quality of intention that is going into directing the mind. Always careful not to be too harsh, too forceful, but also seeing that it does take energy to show up, to keep showing up. As all these phenomena change, just finding our way as usual into whatever relationship feels most apparent in terms of receiving sounds, receiving visual impressions, smells and tastes, physical experience in the mind and heart. And so just as we in previous days have 
learn to invite a sense of tenderness or warmth into the mind heart that's receiving sound, receiving body sensation. in a way to soften that relationship, in a way that can kind of undercut any tension we might be applying and find us in a softer, more tender relationship with these experiences. You can also see if there is any of this other quality of the heart available. If there's any sense of what we might call equanimity. A sense of acceptance. Peace. Maybe a flavor of calm, but also a, a deeper okayness and stability of mind. Sometimes it's just worth looking to see if that aspect of heart is available, just like we might do with loving kindness or compassion. You don't have to go digging for it, but just seeing if there's any sense of this cooler quality. You may or may not notice. But we can start to see that there is a way of exploring, attuning to that, just as we might attune to another Brahma Vihara or to the presence or absence of energy, interest. And so as we start to receive perhaps the stream of sound, Of course, we have been training the attention to explore the nature of the sound. Receive the changing textures and tones. And in this case, we might incline instead to just seeing if there's any way that the heart can receive whatever it's receiving, with a kind of acceptance, that these sounds are changing and flowing. Some we may like or not like. the quality of the heart that receives them peacefully without preference. It's okay that some are loud and some are soft. Some are pleasurable, some are grating. We move away from the investigation and see if we can find some realm of this coolness of heart, the stability of okayness, of peace, with whatever is arising and passing at the ear door. You don't need to get involved 
Just attuning to the part of the mind and heart that knows that it's okay. No matter what happens in the realm of sound. Of course, we see that seeing is still happening, even with our eyes closed. Color, shape, movement, form, light and dark. Rather than get involved, rather than looking more closely. You can attune to the quality of heart that's accepting of whatever arises in the visual field. Seeing if there is any coolness, peace, not disturbed by this changeability and flux. And if so, feeling the relief of that coolness. The refreshing quality of acceptance. The laying down of the burden of needing things to be one way or another in the field of sight. And this relief can permeate the mind. and permeate the body. This cool, dark nourishment of acceptance. receiving the sensations throughout the body, the hands, the breath, this wide range of physical experience that we know and are familiar with. This realms of pleasure and pain unfolding according to nature. Out of our immediate control. And seeing if we can attune to that quality of acceptance. Of knowing There's preference, but also trusting there is an aspect of the mind that doesn't need things to be one way or another. I trust the nature of the body arising and passing on its own. according to conditions. And you can feel the sense, even subtle, of accepting these bodily sensations as they are. Not needing to fight or struggle or manipulate or change.
not even needing to investigate. Just finding this cool well of the heart that it can accept physical sensations as they are and be relieved in this equanimity. Be nourished by this coolness. You can feel a deepening faith in the release of the body of the physical senses from the tightness of our preference. Feeling any softening, any relaxation, any of this nourishment in the heart, in the mind, in the body. Settling in slowly to this pool. of equanimity. And even the aspects of the mind that arise, thought, emotion, planning, memory, All of these churning based on past conditions. Can we find an aspect of the mind that is unperturbed by thought, not distressed by the natural unfolding? of the mind itself. The heart's acceptance of peace with whatever arises in the mind. Not judging, not needing to figure it out or control. experience of the mind arising and passing based on condition. Trusting that there is a, a well, a cave, a coolness of the heart, undisturbed by all this change that accepts the mind, the body, all the sense experiences arising and passing as they do is nourished and strengthened by this acceptance. quenching our thirst for peace. Of course, we'll lose this thread but slowly we begin to trust that any sense experience 
any phenomena that arises can be folded back into the heart's ability to accept and be at peace. Nothing need be outside the heart's capacity for acceptance, release, and relief.
Uh, we have a little time this morning before interviews. And for those folks who haven't checked, please check again today, the interview schedule. <clears throat> um, I think it's just for today that's posted up. And this evening I'll post um, for Thursday and Friday as well, Friday and Saturday as well. Um, but we have a little time now um, for Darine and I to answer any questions you might have about your practice. I think we'd still like to keep it to the folks who are the kind of full-time yogis. Um, but anything about that equanimity practice or your retreat, um, the talk, anything that might be helpful. You can raise your little blue hand by going to the um, participant window on the right hand side. If you click participants down below um, and then over underneath there, there should be a little under the more button, a raise your hand as Harry Palmer has done. So let's see, Harry, are you there? So you have to unmute there, there we go. Yeah. That, that same approach can be used toward the hindrances towards anything. Having this equanimous feeling and then if torpor arises, meet it with equanimity. Yeah, it's 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 yeah. Okay. Totally. I mean it's it's a good point because I think it's like that that is it's our you know, like if you look at the tradition or you look at sort of maybe our own impulse, right? The sense of like, oh, well, sloth and torpor comes up or restlessness comes up. And there's this idea that like you should do something about it, right? It's called a hindrance. It must be bad. There must be like some way to counteract it. And there are tricks and tools that are, you know, can be helpful at times for all of those things. You know, noticing doubt and being like you know kind of questioning it and you know getting into some process or whatever and those are all useful and i think that your your point which is something that we really do try to emphasize is if we feel like our freedom is based on needing something to be there or not be there it's not freedom and so in this sense in the buddhist sense and so actually the deeper freedom is acceptance of sleepiness, acceptance of restlessness, acceptance of anger, wanting, doubt, like, you know, these things that we think of as the enemy. And so there's like this kind of deeper inclination towards equanimity as a method, um, not just as a goal that, um, yeah, that I really do think we try to emphasize, you know, and um and then, yeah, you start to be able to have a relationship with them of like, oh, maybe wanting is okay. Maybe we understand. That's how you get to understanding that wanting is trying to protect us. Anger is trying to protect us. Doubt is trying to protect us from the unknown that we're, you know, slowly inviting it into. So, yeah. Okay. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Kay, you there? Let's see. For some reason, it's not letting me. Hold on. Oh, there you uh, go. Hey. Hi. Um, I realized the balancing of um, investigation and equanimity in the seven factors. And oh, like in, because we're in, I don't know how many days, it seems like there's so much momentum that I just want there's that wanting to investigate all the time and the pulling back in a way of equanimity felt really, really balancing. Um, and I, I heard Michelle or Steven talked about it before just a little bit. I forgot when, but what's the difference in that equanimity and seven factors of awakening in the Brahman Biharas. Mm -hmm. um, I can start. Darin, if you have anything you want to add, you can jump in. Um, that second part, it's a really good, it's a, it's, a, it's a great question. I think that there's like a, there is this, there is a difference on some level that's important, right? So that there's equanimity that arises as a result of wisdom. And there's the equanimity 
um, of a kind of balanced mind towards thing that is a, a kind of flavor of mind that you can start to kind of cultivate and attune to. And, and it is important to understand how they're related and how they're different, right? That there is, um, it is important to understand that like, oh, we, we do have this capacity for like rest and relief. And like, like you said, like it's balancing the investigative piece. And sometimes we see that the investigation is maybe motivated a little bit out of like a, a wanting or it has agitation in it. And, and that like, oh, bringing a little equanimity kind of brings that into balance <clears throat> as like the sense of like, okay, are, can we accept things as they are? You know, things are as they are is one of the phrases that we use to sort of like incline the attention that way. So that's like a kind of reminder and a, and like a, yeah, like an invitation to this ca capacity of mind that's there. Um, equanimity as the, as one of the factors and similarly, you can still incline toward it, right? Just like you're saying, it's like, oh, maybe I need to like tweak a little bit, you know, often my, in my kind of system, the opposite has been true. Like I'm, I'm very inclined to equanimity and it was some point that I really had to have pointed out to me <laughs> by Michelle that like that I w it wasn't balanced with interest that I was like trying to just be okay with everything without actually investigating right without being like oh you actually if you want a deeper equanimity you actually need to get into the the true nature of things and see that it's it's hard to see the comings and goings versus just the acceptance of them and so the more the mind gets involved in like observing and noticing the nature of the uncontrollability of things mostly we're going to see initially the hindrances right that harry brought up uh, the resistance to that changeability but as we get more and more familiar with oh okay pain and pleasure and it's like oh we're tired of wrestling and fighting with everything there's like a deeper acceptance that comes out of this kind of releasing the, the mind stops expecting experience to be satisfying it doesn't look as much for uh satisfaction and relief in that which is, could never provide it and so there's like this deeper stability with the changeability of phenomena that is like more like equanimity as a result of insight and it's a you know very profound you know it's 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 in terms of like the progress of insight you know there's very profound experiences of equanimity that um that are wisdom oriented and then there's profound experiences of equanimity that are more concentration oriented right where if you do this equanimity practice like a brahma vihara you can get into like a very cool space <laughs> right where it's like things are quiet and it's just like there's not much going on and there's just like this sort of like but it's a little dead right it's a little bit quiet because it's being controlled by the mind the mind is sort of like dampening things versus the equanimity of insight which is peaceful in the aliveness and the un in the, the wildness of experience and so it's considered a deeper thing but it's related you know there's a similar flavor of mind yeah camarada <laughs> anything uh zoe so um well first i worked a little bit yesterday with michelle's metaphrases and when you started today about equanimity i just realized that those phrases had all the brahma viharas in them um you know they may i be happy just as i am be peaceful with whatever's happening on my side it was amazing how they all had all the Brahma Viharas and those phrases. But the question I had is- Will, I was, you, will you, just before you go on, will you, which, which, uh, which, the, which phrases, phrases are you- The phrases, may I be, I mean, she shared these, you know, years ago, so I don't, mm -hmm. you know, they might have changed, mm -hmm. but it was, um, may I be happy just as I am, which is equanimity and, you know, compassion and also mm -hmm. Mudita in there too. Great. And, may I be peaceful, whatever is happening, which is, you know, equanimity. I love myself completely. Mm. And it just brings all of those qualities into this, the sitting and being with the Vipassana. As I sort of just sort of dropped, dropped those phrases occasionally, um, 
with the Vipassana. But I was also been working a little bit with trying to notice unpleasant or pleasant before going to, before, you know, um, mushroomed into clinging or aversion. And occasionally I can, but the bigger ones, it's like they're laminated together. I'm not able to, to it just, it, it's just laminated. Um, and so I wonder if you have anything you can share how to work out with it when there's just, it's hard to find, yeah. The, the unpleasant and the aversion are, are yeah. so close, yeah. Yeah, the other ones, is, it's a bit easier to, you know, to notice the pleasant and to, you know, notice the movement towards, but, you know, release it. Um, and occasionally with, I mean, maybe at the point if it's unpleasant and I don't get up and walk away, like, like say sound, um, maybe that's just being with the unpleasant and, you know, I haven't acted out the aversion, but the aversion feels pretty strong. Um, and occasionally I can sort of just be like, okay, I'm pleasant, but mostly it just speedos into a version. Yeah. So. Great. Darine, do you want to start or you good? <laughs> I'm not trying to pressure you. I'm just giving space if you want. I mean, I, and I guess just one more thing. I guess, you know, I mean, I can always bring equanimity to the aversion at that point. Um, but if there's some guidance mm -hmm. to how to widen the gap between the, the two. Okay. Um, I don't know what Jesse's going to suggest, but um, if you're seeing, like, not to make if you're seeing aversion, if you don't, if you miss unpleasant, no problem. Like, don't make that um, a project or, or um, just whatever you're seeing in the present moment is great. And um, as the mind gets quiet and more quiet, perhaps you can start noticing sometimes the unpleasantness uh, right away. But I wouldn't make it a uh, big problem it's okay whatever you catch it as long as you catch it it's great okay thanks yeah i i totally agree i mean it's just the mind i was saying this the other day to someone some teacher someone went i can't remember who it was and what teacher they went to a monk and they were like should i incline the attention toward nibbana or something and the teacher was like no the you know the mind will get the object it deserves <laughs> And there's something about that that's like, it's like whatever the conditions are, you know, it's like, yeah, there's concentration, there's more or less, you're seeing what you're seeing. And yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mess with it. And I think, you know, just, yeah, th there might be times where you start to notice it. It's very subtle. That's very subtle. The distinction between aversion or you know, un unpleasant and aversion. It's happening so quickly and yeah, you just don't know it. And then maybe you notice, oh, you're having aversion to the aversion or the aversion itself is unpleasant. And you know, it's like, like, like that is saying, you catch it where you catch it and you're seeing what you're seeing and don't, it's like to get frustrated with the mind as it is, is part of what you're even saying right around equanimity. It's like, it is, this is, this is it. This is the condition of the mind right now. And you just keep, keep watching and seeing the more you tighten, the less clear you're going to be able to see actually, right? The more pressure you start trying to place, the, the, the duller the mind gets actually. And so it's like, oh, relaxing, accepting, and, and just seeing what's next. Yeah. Mm, cool. Yeah. Great, everybody. Wonderful. Yeah. So um, just you're in there, you're in it, you're doing it. And um, just, yeah, we're, we're really happy for you. And um, yeah, really look forward to checking in more in a, in a little bit with, with uh, you know, some of the group and the next day with more and again with more and keeping on this ride with you. So take good care and um, good luck out there.